My name is Michael Whelan and I'm the project leader for the Inclusion Ed Knowledge Translation Project for the Autism CRC. I'd first just like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're presenting from today in Brisbane, which is the Yarraga, the Yagara and Turrbal peoples, and acknowledge their uh, elders past, present and emerging, and also to acknowledge that this has always been a place of teaching and learning. Uh, okay, so I'm leading a project uh, with four other academics from QUT and from Griffith University, and what we're looking at is creating um, an interface for the research that's coming out of the Autism CRC, translating that knowledge to make it as usable, as accessible, as relevant and meaningful as possible for educators around Australia. And I'll just start by giving you a bit of context for that. So uh, currently there are approximately 770,000 school students experiencing uh, a disability in Australia. And over the last three or four decades, that cohort of young people is increasingly transitioning from special ed environments into mainstream school settings in a variety of supported formats. And one of the consequences of that is that the uh, that educators need to uh, have the best resources available to them to make those learning experiences relevant and appropriate for those mixed classrooms that they're teaching. Um, so at the Autism CRC, we've developed a significant evidence base with the, in the potential to inform and change teacher practice and in order to do that to improve student learning outcomes. However, it's the translation of this evidence base which is critical in changing uh, or supporting uh, teachers to change their practice. And ironically, evidence suggests that professional development opportunities don't consistently result in changes to classroom practice. And in Australia, uh, across all OECD countries, Australian teachers are the least likely to describe any of the PD that they've received as having a moderate or high impact on their teaching. Um, and that could be because the format of the resource uh, doesn't necessarily apply to the situation that the teacher finds themselves in, or that the information perhaps uh, isn't pedagogically developed to a point where it can be applied simply and easily in a classroom. Uh, there could be any number of reasons why when a teacher goes out looking for professional learning resources that things don't necessarily meet their immediate needs. Uh, so the successful translation of this new professional knowledge into changed educational practice is at the heart of our present project's challenge. So the website that we're developing, this portal, intends to facilitate teacher understanding and adoption of evidence-based practices and the success of that will ultimately be realised through improved student outcomes. So in order to achieve the aims that we set up for ourselves of, of translating this extraordinary uh, output of research findings at the Autism CRC, to make them uh, available to teachers in a, in, a, uh, in a supported and a supported in a way of supported implementation, uh, we needed to consult widely with all of the state-based and national stakeholders, including teachers, principals, and policy makers. And this consultation required us to engage with each of the stakeholder groups in co-designing this new e-learning resource. So we decided to use a participatory design framework uh, to deepen our understanding of the communication and technology needs of educators within and across the Australian context. And also we chose to use a, a participatory or co-design methodology to facilitate greater acceptance, investment and uptake of the final portal design by future educators. And this was really critical to us because there are so many resources that are created, uh, particularly online resources, where the end user hasn't been consulted in part of the development of that resource. And one of our catch cries for this project really has been, it's designed with teachers for teachers. So we ran a series of 
co-design workshops and we conducted them with classroom teachers, specialist teachers, principals, policy makers, parents and students on the autism spectrum. And you can see on the image there, there's a, there's a couple of uh, snapshots of what that process looked like uh, with participants from metropolitan, regional and remote schools joining us online to start a conversation in a workshop, in a, in a co-design workshop environment of what their professional learning needs were, what those priorities were, and what, uh, what would be the most influential factors in them uh, taking these resources and implementing them in a classroom. So we had uh, participants from government schools, Catholic ed, specialist providers, independent schools, and we used uh, participants from Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, Tasmania, and Western Australia. And we brought to them a set of provocations. Uh, and those provocations were really around uh, what their ideal learning experience would look like, what a new learning system would look like. And uh, they were held, the 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 workshops, sometimes we had participants live in the room with us, other times we had participants uh, logging in remotely. And we conducted these workshops and asked the participants to design the co concept maps of what, what, how they'd like professional learning resources to be delivered to them, how they'd like to use them, and what the benefits they hope that would to guide us in establishing a set of principles that we can use to inform the design of our website. And so you can see on these walls here, we've got a range of transcripts of learning, professional learning systems should work. Um, uh, we've got a slow network connection according to a message that popped up, but I'm going to ignore it. Um, so we then analysed that data from the teachers but in the first instance from the teachers, uh, and really we analysed it thematically, and then we analysed it textually, and we looked at what the principles and the themes were that emerged from our workshop processes with all of those varying stakeholders. Uh, for those of you who are interested in the analysis techniques, techniques we used, I think these slides will be available afterwards and um, uh, this detail uh, will remain there, but I won't, I won't uh, dwell on it too much now. But basically we use textual and visual analysis to, to extract a set of core principles that would inform our priorities as we develop this online resource. And that the form, the first form that took was a map that's on the screen now, which tried to articulate the relationship, the communications relationship between key opinion leaders, researchers and experts with teachers delivering in practice parents who would be supporting that implementation in home environments and students and also looking at how students would like to see themselves represented in this conversation, in this broader learning community conversation. So based on that we developed a prototype and uh, as you can see on screen there, the prototype, one of the, one of the core uh, foundation, the four core foundations of our project were that we would have diverse learning, an evidence base, a set of vision and values, and the creation of a learning community. Um, the, uh, the website, we, one of the elements we chose to use was drawn from a combination of social media and, and things like uh, Netflix design, where you can see on this screen where there are, for example, trending practices where we're acknowledged a lot of teachers are using this resource. If we had new releases we were putting out on the website, which would indicate that this is perhaps something that the teacher hasn't seen before. And then we had whole of school practices. These are projects that could be implemented at a school level, right down to individual teacher practices that they might implement in the classroom from anything from uh, teacher-student relationship management or preventing behaviour, etc. So, uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail on how these might be presented to teachers. As you can see here, there are three practices on the screen at the moment. Clear instructional sequences, classroom organisation and classroom profile. 
in one of those snapshots, you can see that there's the, pre the visual presence of a researcher who might be able to be contacted through the website moderator to ask specific questions of. There are also information about uh, the duration of implementation of the task and uh, which school group it's aimed at, whether it's middle years, junior school or senior school. And in addition to that, you can see there's a rating system like you might find in a social media setting where um, uh, the learning community who've implemented this particular resource have an opportunity to provide commentary and feedback to other colleagues within that broader learning community. One of the key elements uh, of the site is the opportunity to evaluate the relevance and appropriateness and the uh, the targeting of that resource to the specific need of the teacher. And you're, you have the opportunity either on a, uh, a sliding scale like this or to provide a written commentary about how, how useful this particular resource was in meeting your needs. That information would then go straight back upstream to the researchers who've developed this particular resource and the knowledge translation team. So that there's a continuous conversation between the learning community, the teachers who are implementing these resources, right through upstream to the researchers who are informing the design of these learning programs. And that continuous conversation between a learning community with each other, doing peer-to-peer -peer exchange of knowledge and learning right through to the people who are publishing their resources, is a continuous loop. Um, the four principles that emerge as Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm back on. So there were four uh, foundations that our, our project is being uh, informed by a set, of a, a set of principles. The first being strong foundation, knowing that the information that's been published in these teacher practices is informed by best practice research. Um, there's quite a lot of resources. If anyone is resource shopping online and you do a search for a particular um, uh, support material, often there can be hundreds of hits and it's very difficult to know whether something has been invented uh, by someone casually. Uh, or whether it's been uh, it's been thoroughly researched and developed and critiqued by professionals. So having a strong foundation was a very important part of the message. The other was efficient discovery, being able to find the right resources as a specific situation arises. So making sure that the systems that we establish on our site and the key words that we tag that our that as teachers search our resource. Uh, website that they can access what they need as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Supported implementation was critical. The idea that we would provide pedagogical frameworks for the implementation, uh, uh, the, the planning, implementation and evaluation of each resource to make sure that we're providing the roadmap for teachers to implement these practices and then report on their success or otherwise. And the final point being the learning community. We really wanted to establish uh, a learning community where colleagues and practitioners can exchange ideas about the implementation of resources or about the need for new resources and that this growing community uh, is the living uh, the living citizenship of you if you like of a national community of educators focused on best practice delivery of of teaching and learning for diverse learners so uh, I'll really quickly uh, close up now by saying that the stage one has been completed. We're in stage two now where we're actually building the resource and we're taking it out to teachers for user testing. Um, and we really hope the impact is profound because there's these 770,000 school students experiencing a disability and there are 404,000 uh, educators across all jurisdictions and systems in Australia who we're hoping will engage with this resource and have an impact on the students and their families 
continually by using the Inclusion Ed resource. So that's it from me, everyone. There's a number of references there that will go out in the uh, at the end of the webinar. 